Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey has finally been released in the movie theater. Yay, because that's the movie that we've all been asking for, right? But there is something that I guess would be on some people's mind. Is this movie scary at all? Or if it is scary, how scary is it? So in order for this movie to succeed at being a scary movie, it has to surpass all four of these brackets that I basically created in order to determine how scary a movie is. And the four brackets this movie needs to pass are how bloody is the movie, how many kills are in the film, how violent is it, and how many jump scares are in the movie, or if there are any jump scares at all. The first bracket that we're going to be analyzing is how bloody is the movie. And in order for this movie to pass this bracket, we need to figure out how much blood is in the movie, how much gore is in here, and are there any torture devices in here that help suspend and the amount of pain that causes our characters to be in the film. So for a movie title that's about blood and honey, how much blood is actually in the film? Well, blood does play a part in here, but in all honesty, it's kind of lame. It's not really gushy or over the top as you would like for it to be, and it seems like the direction this film goes in only makes choices where they're insisting it's just enough instead of thinking, how can we make this silly? A movie that has childhood classic characters inside a horror film should not hold back on the blood and think there should be a specific limit to it. The film can get gory at times, and I remember a couple of moments where I thought it managed to be schlocky, but they're far and few in between. Characters have managed to suffer through those moments at times, but when the movie tries to have serious moments on topics that can be creepy and disturbing, it comes off as offensively stupid and quite pathetic, especially with one character in the film. It doesn't really have much to do with the blood factor, and I'll come back to that later, but for the idea of torture, it's really stupid. But for the blood factor, it's nothing special or new as far as I'm aware. For the blood section, I'm going to give it a 1.5 out of 5. For the gore, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. And for the torture, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5. And with all three of those brackets calculated, the blood section brings itself to a 4.5 out of 15. The second bracket that we're looking at are the amount of deaths that are in here. And in order for this bracket to succeed, we need to figure out the MPA rating to see if this movie succeeds at being a rated R film, or if it's fine as a PG-13 movie, or as a rated R movie, if it should have been a lot better, but instead felt like a PG-13 film. Next, we need to talk Talk about how grotesque the movie can get, how gross can it actually be? And lastly, are there any traps in the movie where the main protagonists barely have any room to escape at all? There is a total amount of 12 kills that happen in the film, and most of them can be seen as cheap as well as dumb. It is in fact a rated R film, and it isn't hiding that, but even for a PG-13 film like Megan that understands how to produce kills the correct way, and it can give us an R-rated cut, shows you the lack of imagination and the ability to understand how to make an entertaining kill factor. Sometimes it looks like the film isn't even trying and is heavily reliant on the idea that this film will do fine because of what the concept of the film is. For the grotesque factor, the kills can come off as brutal and nasty, but I think the only amount of entertainment that could be had coming from these kills is again only because there are characters from a children's tale, and if you voice these characters acting stupid and saying ridiculous lines, then you could have some entertainment from it. But on its own, they don't work at all. All of the characters act ridiculously stupid. There are plenty of moments where the characters could have easily escaped and were never trapped to begin with. Instead, they all constantly make stupid decisions, which probably can be entertaining for some who would like to see a train wreck of a film, but in order to succeed this bracket, it fails on every account. So for the MPA rating, I'm not gonna lie, I'll probably give that a 3 out of 5. The grotesque, I'll give it a 2 out of 5 for the sake of some amount of brutal kills, but for the traps, it's an absolute 0 out of 5. And when calculating all three of those sections, it brings the kill factor of 5 out of 15. The next bracket that we're going to be talking about is the violence in here. How violent can this movie get? Are there any characters in here that have a very aggressive or violent personality? Do we have any characters in here that have high ambitions to not stop doing what it is that they're doing and to continue to pursue their actions no matter what gets in their way? And the last one that needs to help succeed this bracket is the brutality. So how violent does this movie get with its main antagonist? Well, the idea was there, but the film just decides to not play onto that and focus on this other storyline that has nothing to do with Winnie the Pooh. So the ambition and drive of Pooh is clearly displayed and addressed, but instead of giving us that story, the movie shows glimpses of it and goes away to something else that's being enforced into this movie. This film becomes incredibly incoherent by losing its focus on the primary reason why this film decided to exist in the first place. Which brings me back to the point 
point I made earlier. So, coming back from what I said before in the blood section where one of the characters was insultingly offensive, this is an example of the people in charge not really trying that hard to make the film somewhat engaging or tying it into the movie at all. They just decided to put in a random backstory to a pointless character subplot just so we can have some kind of feeling for the character. It has nothing to do with the movie and the idea that it tries to give us some kind of message about trauma in a film that's supposed to be portrayed as idiotic. It's really ironic because that makes the film even more idiotic in a bad way and not the fun kind of bad. So not only is the personality and ambitions for Pooh's drive completely shafted and no longer the main focus, but they decided to include someone else's story, not tying it into Pooh's story or giving no reason for him to go after that person and their friends, but for some odd reason still do it, and botch any kind of real intrigue on understanding the concept of trauma or anything brutal for that matter. It not only fails at being serious and not just for obvious reasons, but even on trying to do something in that sort of merit, it also fails in the entertainment value to be had, and you can see why because of the pure laziness that went into the writing of this movie. So for the personality section, I'm going to give that a 1 out of 5. The ambition to drive is more like a 0.5 out of 5 because the actual ambition just gets shafted to something else that's incredibly pointless. And for the brutality rating, it's a 0 out of 5. So all three of those brackets calculate the violence section to be a 1.5 out of 15. And the last bracket that we're going to be analyzing, and probably the one that you're most interested in, are the jump scares. Scared. We're going to be talking about how many jump scares are in the film, whether or not they linger with traumatization, or if they're just a quick shock just to get you tensed up for a minute, how uncomfortable these jump scares can be, and whether or not there are any jump scares at all in the film. And once we're done analyzing the jump scares, we're going to combine all four of these brackets and calculate them all together, and then we'll be able to get a fully calculated percentage on how scary this film actually can be. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button in case you want to see more videos like this in the near future. Because it really lets me know how much you guys actually enjoy these videos. So how are these so-called jump scares, if that's what you can call them, honestly? Well, by the tone of my voice, you can tell that for what they had in here, there's still nothing impressive at all. I counted at least three to four jump scares that could be technically counted as jump scares. Other moments in the film try to count themselves as jump scares, but don't really work, or I guess they're not intended to be one. The reason why I wouldn't say those aren't really jump scares is because they can have a jump cut towards a person that feels like it's intended to be a surprise, but it's more like a character reveal or one of the who characters introduced and then they would get started with their slashing. There's even a moment in the first act of the film where you can easily see a movie trying to slowly introduce you a surprise but even looking at how it's edited it looks like that they're not even going to try and scare you or even give you a sound effect to indicate it is a jump scare or that the scene is even scary. As if they knew that those moments are not scary, so they just let the scenes play themselves out. But anyways, with the three to four technical jump scares that are in the film, they're still not good on their own either way. If you watch a minimum amount of horror movies and are vaguely familiar on when a jump scare happens and when it doesn't, and what happens before or afterwards, everything will be easily predictable on how these characters die, how it happens, when it happens, and when that jump scare sound effect comes into play. Creating jump scares in a horror film can be an effective and fun thing, and they don't necessarily have to scare you if they play up to it being fun in a goofy or trolling kind of way. But the film never tackles either of those opportunities, especially when its concept is insanely silly, and it's such a missed opportunity to do so. Even judging the jump scares on their own merit for anything that makes you feel disturbed or leaving you feeling some kind of uncomfortable feeling is only left by some of the kill factors and how squeamish you can be when seeing someone die in a horror film. But if you're used to that anyway, these jump scares are still pretty useless. So the fact that these jump scares are insanely predictable to just a regular movie going audiences and horror fans, but also the fact there's this attitude in the film where it seems like that the editors don't find the jump scares to even be jump scares in the first place, gives the jump scare rating an easy fail and it deserves a 0 out of 5. In the end, this movie is pretty much an inconsistent, terribly written and directed film that can have some entertainment value, but it would only work if you're in the mood to just see the train wreck the film provides and imagine a scenario where the real Winnie the Pooh characters are saying particular ridiculous lines that make the film insanely goofy. So calculating everything together, this makes the film 22% scary, which is barely scary at all. A little scarier than Morbius, but that's not a compliment. <laughs> so what did you guys think of 
Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Did you think it was scary? Did you not think it was scary? Did you agree with this rating system? Did you think the system needs to be updated? Put your thoughts down in the comment section below and let's have a conversation about it. And like this video if you agree with what I say, or dislike this video if you disagree with what I say. I don't mind the dislikes. So that is it I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be sure to see you in the next video.